Good evening, uh, everybody. It's, uh, I think everybody can hear me. Yeah, uh, six years ago, I uh, showed up in Charlottesville on this amazing adventure. And um, I, it's been one of the most amazing journeys of my life to this point. I've met amazing people and what an incredible challenge. Um, been at an iconic university, um, completely different part of the country, traveling in a pack with my dearest friends and their families, um, developing and shaping and grooming lives and helping a program as Jim comes off the field almost after every game, it's the first time since or the first time ever. And so lots of growth and experiences and things that, um, have, uh, have been imprinted on my on my soul. Um, I've had the chance to work with what I believe is the very best athletic director on the planet. And Carla has become a dear friend, um, trusted confidant and just exceptional leader that I'm so thankful for. Um, I've been a head coach for 17 years in a row. Uh, I was an assistant 11 before then, and I was a graduate assistant two years before then, and that's 31 years straight of football. Somebody's not muted. And so it's 30, yeah, 31 years of, of straight football, and my wife and I will have been married 25 years in March. All we've known together is the rhythm of a football season. Uh, it's all my kids have known. And this January, all three will be gone. Uh, and Holly and I are empty nesters. And all they've known is the rhythm and cycle of football. And we know what that looks like really, really well. Um, and I would love to say there's been this buildup and a long amount of um, epiphanies and thought, but um, Clearly this week, um, there was um, a sense of clarity to me that I needed to step back from college football and reassess, renew, reframe, and reinvent uh, with my wife as a partner, um, our future and the next chapter of our lives. Um, I was requested to stay by our athletic director. I was requested to stay by our president uh, it's my decision only, and and um, and Holly, my wife's a little stunned and shocked too. <laughs> um, still, uh, but I believe a renewal, and a pause, and a reframing, and a reinventing, and a reconnecting, is necessary to then become the very best person I can be moving forward. And as you know, my passion. And my wife's passion, we love to teach and inspire and build people, young people especially. And I know what that takes. And I'm looking forward to, again, the chance to renew and reflect and reinvent and re-become. And then re-enter some place at some time on rocket fuel to become uh, even a better version of maybe who I currently am. Um, as I consider um, my boys, I'm, I'll be the proud parent of two off serving on missions, <laughs> um, knocking on doors and doing good and trying as hard as they can to help other people. Another in college and here Holly and I now will be together alone for the first time <laughs> in, uh, well, yeah, 23 years. We, neither one of us know what that's gonna look like either. Um, we're anxious to find out, and none of this I'm viewing as permanent. Um, this is just a chance to re-become, and like on any summit, you don't do it all at one time, right? There are times you need to pause and refuel and hook the oxygen tank back up, and man, I don't know, unthaw the freeze-dried food and you know recharge the butane tank, and so unless you like eating cold freeze-dried food, if you've ever camped doing that, it's not very good. Um, I love 
love, love my team. I just met with them and um, I'm so hopeful to be able to have us perform well and be together and have another bowl victory um, for this class and this team um, to culminate this for them. And the reason the announcement now is to allow it to then be about our team uh, moving forward as much as possible. Um, one more thing, there is a, uh, a bit of heaven that Holly and I have carved out. Uh, we call it the HB3, uh, which would be our brand, Holly Bronco and three boys. And this has been way more than football to our family, our little tribe of five and that sanctuary and that place we live on has been transformative for all of us in our lives, as well as the city of Charlottesville and UVA. And again, back to Carla as the world's best AD. Holly said it's clearly because she's a woman um, is why she has superpowers. So, and I think I believe her. Um, and I believe that college football um, needs great people. And I think it needs grownups. And I think it needs a sense of balance and wisdom and I think it needs um, a focus on the development of people um, as young people, regardless of whether they're a great player or not. And so I'm not taking my decision lightly um, as I try to do those things and have tried. And uh, again, the next journey will be uncovered as we go. And um, hard to uncover it if there's not a pause and contemplation and reflection. And so that's what I'm choosing to do. So with that, I'll be glad to take questions. We will start with Jeff White from virginiasports.com, then Mike Barber from the Richmond Times Dispatch, and then Preston Willett from WCAA TV in Charlottesville. The Broncos did the way the final Yeah, I, um, I, I can't put a percentage on it. My first response would be no, um, because I, I like hard things. I know what it feels like, right? And I assess and I like challenges. And really, um, there was enough separation, Jeff, from that time period. You know, in the coach's life, things turn over fast. And so um, the clarity of this was, was really finalized yesterday in my mind. Um, so... Um, man, in, in a coach's in a coach's world, that's that's almost an eternity from whenever the last game was. So, this is a, a personal, and yeah, somebody needs to mute. So this is a personal and just like bigger picture. That's how I think decision. And any other data point, it's hard for me to even remember to your question who we played the week before the last game and who we played before that. You know, that's just how coaches are dialed because it happens so fast. So, I don't. I don't see a correlation there. Um, and I would tell you if I did, it just doesn't, I, I don't sense that. Hey, Bronco, if it's not the, the losing streak and, and you love your AD and you love your team, I have to ask, do you view college football as, as broken and, and do you not want to be a part of kind of where it is right now? That, that really wasn't part of the decision. Again, just everything I said at the beginning is the reason for the decision. It's just a chance, right? After 31 years straight, to step back and renew and recover and reconnect and reinvent um, myself and our family and our purpose um, and then be intentional about where we reenter and how and whatever that is. Um, and it very well could be, I don't know if it ever would be college football again, but right, this is uh, everything that I said prior to this is the purpose and that's not what I mentioned. So um, no. And if I could follow up, did you have a chance to speak with your staff or did this uh, kind of catch them by surprise? I spoke to my, ta my staff at 445 today. I spoke to my team at 5 and now I'm speaking to you at 530. Bronco, you've always talked about just the family atmosphere that you have with this staff. What was their reaction kind of finding out about this from you just kind of moments ago and then also your team? They had similar reactions and um, tears, um, uh, shock, um, 
sadness, uh, disbelief. Um, yeah, and it's going to take time to process. Um, we know, right, and for most of us, there's there's different cycles you go through, and there's um, anger or denial, or and then withdraw, and then finally you get back to acceptance. And you know, I, I there's all of those things happening right now. Um, I know exactly the implications um, of people because that's the decision. Those are that's the world I live in. The decisions I make, in fact, impact families and young people. And so I don't take it lightly. Um, and after 17 years in a row of being a head coach, I know what's required. And I, I don't take that lightly. And I uh, absolutely want to be at my best in anything that I do for everyone that I'm responsible for. Um, but most importantly, um, yeah, uh, my partner, Holly, who is, <laughs> that's 25 years straight. Um, 17 of which I've been a head coach and man, I don't know if anyone, well, none of you know what that could be like, and I don't know, but what I do know is I want to spend a lot of time with her together, reconsidering what we're next thing we're going to do together. And that would be my first priority is what are we going to do together and what's next for us before we take on anything else. I'm not sure I can name anything specifically other than bowl games are commonplace now, and that's below expectations. We expect to win the Coastal Division. That's what we expect. Um, and so raising expectations, raising benchmarks, providing a new launching pad to really gain momentum now from here, helping UVA imagine and see what's required to play exceptional football, what kind of consistency that, be, that will be required. And so... Um, I just like the things that we've done um, to help the program, but most importantly, the people that are being built, that's everything. It's just through college football that's happening. And there's no record for that. What I'm most proud of is through the higher expectations that have shown um, achievement on the field, the people that are being built along the way is the metric. And I'm, I love who my players are and who they're becoming. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, uh, I think we are a consistent winner. Um, year one reflected that it was harder than I thought. Um, when I saw the first year of two and 10, I had to reframe everything. And that recalibration got us to six and six. Um, and that recalibration got us to eight and five and a belt bowl win. And that recalibration got us the coastal championship and the state championship and a bit in the orange bowl. And I don't know how to calibrate for a pandemic. I don't, I don't even know what that wasn't in my manual. Um, and then we started again and we're probably six plays short of winning the coastal and winning the state, probably six, arguably seven. Um, and really disappointed because the expectation for our program now is to win the coastal and the state, right? And so that's a completely different place. Um, now, in terms of your question, what will it take? Um, commitment. Um, and right, um, the uh, there's all kinds of seats you can buy for a concert, right? You can buy the price of admission and sit up in the rafters, or you can buy front row tickets and have a backstage pass. Um, and both of those influence, uh, outcome. And so, right. Every institution decides what level of support and alignment they want with any program on their grounds. And so really it will just come down to decision-making and, re, uh, relocation or reallocation of resources, but also leadership selection. Right. And I'm responsible for everything that happened in the program. 
and independent of anything else, right? The record is mine and I own all of that and I love it. Um, and I love my team. And there are certainly things we can do better and could have done better. Um, but my hope is that uh, the past six years of ref has, uh, has shown specifically and decisively what the next steps are needed to be um, to launch us even farther forward than we are. And that's what I hope for the players, the fans, this institution, our athletic director, uh, and everyone else is what I hope. Lots, lots and lots and lots. Um, and I would say too numerous and maybe the ones that I, that I will um, say, um, yeah, won't show up on the score. Uh, but we just had a player get an amazing job after tremendous struggles. Um, and he played so well. That's not the struggles I'm talking about. I'm talking just internally and becoming and the challenges in college and the rigor and managing family life and different things. He just got an amazing job. And wow, did I feel good yesterday when I got that text. Um, maybe equivalent to, um, yeah, the belt bowl win, maybe equivalent to, um, I don't know, any win that you want to say. There's been fans that have rushed the field here. It felt like that, except maybe even better. And wow, was that so rewarding um, to, to see what he just accomplished. Thank you so much, sir. Good luck in your future. Thank you. Uncle, when did you really first start thinking about this and how much did you wrestle with this decision? And then the third part of that is, did you surprise yourself with how you ended up uh, with the decision? Yeah, I've been a process. Uh, so uh, is, today is Wednesday or Thursday. Today's Thursday, right? Um, Sunday through Thursday. Uh, first prompting Sunday, um, then contemplation and a few action steps in a different direction. And man, did that not feel good. And then re, uh, uh, um, uh, returning to the first thought yesterday afternoon. So short term, but impactful. Um, and that's right after 31 years, that's a pretty short window. But I, I know myself and I know what that means. And man, does that take courage then to act on that, especially in a setting like this. Um, uh, but this is a choice in time to reframe what I'm hoping is a more beautiful and even more impactful way to help other people after this. I don't know what that's gonna be yet, but that's what I hope it is. How did you deliver this news to the team knowing that they probably all would be completely surprised by what you had to say? I don't, I don't really know how to answer it. Um, I, every year I redefine my purpose and I have a purpose statement and I put that on the screen and I read that and showed it and, and they see that it aligns. And I think, right, every choice is governed by a principle and every principle is governed by a belief. And so, it, and they've seen this before. So I reframe my beliefs and the principles that govern it and then showed how this choice reflects that. And that's the framework I started from and hard to talk and be emotional at the same time in front of people that you love. Uh, but I wanted them to understand um, that's nothing they did, right? I love them. Um, and trying to then say, okay, how can I add more impact to the world? Maybe after a, re, a refresh, right? A recalibration. And it's not sustainable like this pace as a college football coach and as a head coach for that many years. And if you really, really want to do it right, not just winning, but if you really want amazing academics, if you want to really build great people, right? If you really want amazing character, if you really want to teach values, if you really want service to happen, that's harder rather than easier. And I want all of that. And, um, and yeah, um, I'm not going to do it unless I can and, and feel um, energetic enough, right, to do all that. And so they saw that and they understand that it doesn't mean they like it, but uh, I'm looking to continue to add value right? Not just write it out. And yeah, um, there's a base camp and sometimes there's, I don't even know what we'll call it, a halfway camp. And I've just kind of pulled into the halfway camp for a minute and need to re 
you know, reheat and, and thaw out and just, yeah, see what's in the backpack. And then, yeah, here we go again at some point. So David, what I heard is, because you were breaking up, I heard, I basically heard the question is, what role did my faith have in this decision? Is that what the yes, question was? Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, because you said you started on this topic. Yes. Thing. Yeah, very perceptive, David, as usual. Um, that's exactly where it started. And I, I believe I have a father in heaven. I believe I'm, if I live and really try to connect, I can receive direction and promptings um, now it takes courage to act on those in faith. Um, and most of most every decision that's been positive in my life has been when I've listened. And most of the time, kind of the natural part of me says, no, man, don't do that. And but inside I know, wait, that's what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah, um, as you know, David, that right, um, faith is my belief, right, governs everything. My belief governs the principles and the principles govern the choices. and where else would I start than what I think governs all? And so, yeah, that's where I started. And I tried different things in a few number of days and different paths that I thought might address another way. And it, it did not feel right. Um, and I was not at peace. And as I returned to my initial thought, it was very clear. Um, so that's where all of my major decisions come, uh, David. And that's not only regarding this one, but anything in my life. So. I, you've just kind of, I've just shared my pattern for everything else as well as this. Were you and Holly remain in Charlottesville? So there is no better place on the planet than the HB3. And it'll be, we don't know we, uh, how we we could ever leave that place. Um, we, we don't know. So there is not a, I don't have like, if I pull this out, there's no words on it that says what's next. It's it's blank, right? There's, we, we don't know. We don't know. And holy cow, is that scary? Um, so we, we don't know. Um, but we love our place here. We love this community, the people, the whole thing. And that's what even makes it harder. Um, so I don't know yet. Um, yeah, to be determined. Stay, stay tuned, I guess, would be the answer for that. I think certainly both have influenced. Uh, I, I don't know how to, um, I don't know a strategy for coaching football in a pandemic and having renewal at the same time. I, I don't know that plan. I kind of tried to invent it as we went and the national landscape in college football right now, I don't, I don't have a plan for that yet. Um, I don't think anyone does because it's emerging so fast. This week alone, I was sharing with my staff, I wish I had my, my phone with me, um, and you guys probably already know this um, because you keep you keep track. Um, but at last count, um, there was let's see here. Hold on just a second. I'm going to try to add some statistics to this earlier today. Over the last um, three days, no, four days, 263 new players in the portal. Um, so there are other issues as well. Um, that just means the direction is changing. That doesn't mean that's why I chose this, but there, there are new things coming and happening. And man, you better be really clear and really sharp and really ready for whatever those are and aligned with it to continue. And, and if you're not certain you're aligned, 
then you might want to pause just for a second and reconsider. And if I am going to do this, I know exactly what this new thing is. And yeah, then we're going to go. Um, so the last two years, especially, but to say that that discounts the previous 29 <laughs> or the other 15 as head coach, there's a cumulative effect, you know, so I don't know what proportion or percentage to put on that. Can you, uh, you, know, you, you obviously said that, that Sunday was the first day that it sort of clicked in your head, but it, it, I mean, I, I assume that a big decision like this doesn't just instantaneously happen. It, was there a moment that you, or, or, or something that really jumped out of your head and said like, you know what, I need to consider this, I need to rethink this. Like, what, what was the time when you said like, all right, I, this is a big decision, but it's one I need to consider. Yeah, um, there really wasn't a thing. It was just an inquiry on a Sunday at the end of the season as to what is next and and how best to help my players and this program um, and our future, Holly and I and my boys, right? What What's next? And I, I like direction. I like contemplation, right? I like doing things intentionally. And and so, by the way, this isn't a, a one Sunday thing, right? <laughs> this, is a, this is an every Sunday thing and a nightly thing and a morning thing, and, right? So um, uh, I just have a little more time on Sundays because we don't work on Sundays here. Go to um, David Billman, Hank Kurz, and Gene Walker. The hands just keep coming. This this is like the world, world record. Bronco, I'm going to apologize if you touched on this at the very beginning. My Wi-Fi cut out for about 30 seconds or so, but how how hard was this decision as it pertains to your staff and especially the guys who made the trip from BYU across the country to do this with you? Yeah, it's um, there's no way to say what that is. These are my closest friends, and this is now their wives and kids who all came, and um, I'm responsible for all of them. And I love all of them. And we were very close before we took this journey. This is now inseparable and galvanized and welded to where you can't break it. And um, I just did in terms of now the paths become different. My hope the way each person goes, like how they do it is the same, um, where they do it, that's, yep, um, that's on me. And you had said you hadn't hinted to any of them prior to breaking the news to them about an hour ago. They kind of all found out at that moment. They did. Thank you. Hey, Bronco, obviously at home you're a rancher, you're a father, you're a husband. Um, but in the broader picture of the world, as you said, for 31 years you've been a football coach. Um, that's kind of your identity in the world. Um, how hard is it going to be to walk away from um, it's, it's really hard, Hank, because um, the world defines me that way, and it's it's kind of easy to be define yourself by what you do. Um, Holly has a pretty cool rule where we don't talk about football at home. And um, so, yeah, you mentioned I prefer cowboy, not rancher, but um, I'll take both. But I, I, I love husband. I love father. I love um, disciple. I love learner. I love, um, hum just being a good human being. Right. I, I, I love, um, uh, just so many other things. And I try to manifest that and demonstrate it through football. Right. That's what I try to do. Um, and I actually consider myself, um, more a teacher than a coach. And I think there's a difference. And in your mind, so to your question, I, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'd love to say I have a plan. I don't know how. It, I should have just said that to begin. I, I don't know how yet. Well, that's kind of my next question is, um, you know, as you, you're, you're probably trembling somewhat and um, really shaken by having done this and, you know, maybe feeling like you've let people down or, or whatever. Um, obviously, this is about you more than, more than anything. Um, in your mind, when you from, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that, to, oh my goodness, this is so exciting that I'm going to do next. How do you, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, I think a couple of things. I, I, um, it's never entered my mind that I've let anybody down. Um, but what has entered my mind, you mentioned trembling. 
uh, because I don't know what's next. Um, but already, if I didn't think the decision was necessary to become and add more value, um, then I wouldn't have done it. Right. So this isn't to break and pause and then um, become irrelevant. This is actually to break and pause to then become hopefully more impactful and helping and, and developing and teaching and serving others is what I'm hopeful. Right. And so I'm excited about that. What is it going to look like? I don't know, but I, um, I'm already there. Um, there, there's no remorse. Um, there's emotion. Um, and again, after this call, right, I'm going to go back to seeing who we play then in this next game and try to help this team and this institution and this program have success and, and have a lasting impact on these kids. And then I'll be able to maybe think about it. I'm, I'm addressing it now, so, but, um, yeah, I haven't given it. I would love to say I didn't decide until I had a plan. I don't have a plan. How did your kids react? Were they like, dude, you waited until we left the house? Was that going to be around all the time? I, ironic, but they, they basically said, we like this version of you better. So I guess, I, I guess I'm different already somehow. same time we know how much you value the relationships you built at, at Virginia and, and the culture you've installed there. So when you look back on it and reflect on what success is to you, which one of those wins out or is it a combination of all of the above? Yeah, I, I just view it as the collective gene, but that's, you have to acknowledge both and compartmentalize both. And, you know, I, I think, I think the world's view of success has to be acknowledged. And then the eternal view of success has to be acknowledged. And as the coach, you, and as a person, you manage both the best you can and acknowledge they're both real. At least they are to me. Right. And so winning and losing matters. Absolutely. Developing people. Wow. Um, I love that part. And when ultimately um, you say what's added the most value, man, I hope I hope um, I've hit and addressed all that with the same vigor and attention as the winning and losing. Um, I don't, I don't have a plan that way. That'll be coordinated with our athletic director and et cetera, right? This is one step at a time. And I've tried to work sequentially through, um, those that I work with, which are my coaches, right? Those that I'm care about so deeply in my players and in the team meeting where all the support staff members were there as well. And our football family, um, I'm now sharing it with you. And so, you know, I'm kind of working from the inside out, um, as best I can. I think it's more of the second, Jeff. Um, I remember saying along the way that um, I would like the end of my life to be um, add so much value that people forgot I was a football coach. And they'd have to go back and look it up. Oh, wait, that guy, he coached football at some point. Um, I've tried to add that value at the same time through football. But I, I would love for the next part to be um, helpful to others, impactful to others, inspiring to others, um, to do things of real value and substance. And, um, and maybe someone will remember if I'm wearing an old ball cap or something, wait, oh yeah, you, you, but you used to be in football, right? And yeah, I used to be in football. Um, and, and that doesn't mean Jeff, I don't, I don't want to say, cause I don't know, like after some time, if I don't say, you know what, that's the very best platform I could do and I'm needed maybe more now than ever. I can have the biggest impact there. I, I don't know. So I'm not ruling that out, but there's something and I'm going to find it. Bronco, you've talked about some of the things you're proud of in this program and, and the accomplishments and, and maybe the direction of what you've built. Um, do you have any input or any opinion on what should happen next in the head coaching position? And would you like to see your staff given the opportunity to continue what you've built? Oh, I, I, um, 
So again, I've already talked about the most intergalactic championship AD in the universe and my trust and partnership with her is off the chart. And so um, I've already um, made myself available to, to, to vet or advise if needed. Um, we're so aligned. Um, we visited today about all the things that the next head coach should have here. And I couldn't have written it any better. It was just like, we see it exactly the same way. And there, uh, there is now still more here at UVA to go and do and become. And Carla wants that. I want that. And I'm, I'm certain that, um, that whoever is chosen, um, for our program will be exceptional. Um, and whoever is lucky enough to join as an assistant coach and a player, it will be an amazing experience for them as it has been for me. You were promised some things in terms of facilities and support. And I know the pandemic got in the way with some fundraising, but it's not there yet at UVA. Um, how much more work needs to be done on that front for your successor to, to reach the next level? Significant um, in terms of, well, I put it this way, significant in relation to expectation of where UVA would really like to be. Um, and so there's good progress being made through Carla's work and President Ryan's help, um, uh, but uh, more is needed um, and everybody knows that. So, um, yeah. And will you still help me build my fence? Um, so I'll probably charge you now because I won't have an income. Um, so we'll, uh, I, I need to look at what the rates are for a good fence builder and then I'll get back to you. It, it doesn't, I, I'm gonna, I, it becomes back to normal cause it's, that's a normal thing I do as a coach, right? It's, um, and that might be too much to ask, but kids are resilient and coaches are resilient. And so once the routine starts again, whenever we start that in preparations, so we'll find out what game we play in. We'll count back number of days to practices. We'll know how many days we need to lift and run. And that routine is our bodies, almost like when you drive to work, you probably go the same direction. And you don't have to think about it much, right? You just kind of move right to that spot and you get going. And there's security and comfort in that. And so I think that for most of us is what change, what makes it so hard is it's new. It's a new road. It's a new path. I don't know this place. What, how do you know where to go? What's that? And so um, my hope is that the focus can be on our preparation, on our team, on um, the game we're going to play. Um, and I'll work as hard as I can to do that and not have the attention on me. Um, because again, right, that the, the, the players play, I'm trying to help them become. And I know that's probably unrealistic under these circumstances, but I'm trying to stay on this call for a world record length to diminish the amount of other calls I have to be on between now and when we play. With that said, we'll take our last two questions <laughs> from Greg and, uh, and Dean have been on more press conferences than anybody else around here, Jerry Rackley. Yeah. uncertain at this point. Um, what I do know is anyone that chooses UVA has made the best decision of their life to become an amazing person. The educational part, the community part, the relationship part, and the football part. Um, I think it's, it's too much to say it's not um, influenced by the head coach, but we already know Carla. We already know the principle she's going to pick someone on, and you're going to have another amazing UVA head coach of any sport. Right. And that's I don't think there's any risk. Only benefit. Bronco, other than the master plan and the new football room that this program desperately needs, what else would you recommend that the program needs going forward for your successor? Yeah, um, I think it's a great question, Jerry, but I, I really think um, I would love for we to find the right venue and let Carla answer that and stay on that point until everybody's tired and just let her let her describe that. Um, and I think, cause I don't think it will sound right. And I don't think it's appropriate for me because I'm uh, grateful, but I'm so thankful to be here and the experience I've had. Now I don't in any way, shape or form want any of you to frame this. Like if he had this, right, that's not what I'm saying. And so I think that ought to come from Carla and, and man, that would be hard for me if I saw anything that came out like that. Cause I, 
right? That's not what I'm saying. Um, and so I think really for Carla moving forward, that would be the way to hit that. You bet. Thank you.